This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. When, uh, uh, years and years ago, this was one of the points that revolutionized my life as, as, a, as, a, as a teacher and as a minister. I was teaching Bible study. And uh, I had this group with me, and, and uh, it was, it was uh, young people. I was working with young people all the time. And I was going through, and I was, you know, just going through the, going through the things that you do with, with, with young people. And we had our fun, and all that was important, and recreation was all important and everything. And I was doing my Bible studies and so on and so on. And you could tell when I got into Bible studies, they were just kind of like zoning out. They were there, you know, they were looking at you, but they weren't, they weren't in touch with what was going on. I finally just, you know, I thought to myself, I am not, I'm not getting through. This isn't working. And I finally realized that the reason it wasn't working was because it wasn't meeting a need in their lives. I mean, it just suddenly dawned on me, well, it doesn't work because it doesn't meet a need. And so I just stopped and I said, tell me what you want from God. Tell me what you want from your faith. Tell me what you're looking for. And we would, we would go through all of these answers, you know, the, the standard, well, I would just like to, to have a, a, you know, a, a good relationship with God, and, and I would, and, you know, I just want to have a good church, you know, where I can come and, and enjoy my friends, and, and you go through all of these answers, and you go through the spiritual answers, oh, you know, just want to have a good worship experience, you know, all of these great answers that everybody spots off, and we would do them in this room too, if we were to ask that question and ask you to answer it publicly. And then finally, after all of those died down, I didn't say anything, I just stood there waiting, and one young woman in the back corner, I can remember it like it happened yesterday. She just said quietly, I just want to connect with God. And I realized that what I needed to be as a teacher was somebody who helped people connect with God. And what God says to you and through this passage is that that's exactly what he wants. He wants you to connect with Him. And that's what prayer is all about. Prayer is finally, finally getting to that point where you are actually connecting with God. It's not all the other emotions and going to church and being a good person and never, you know, not dancing like my mother, you know, and, and, and not doing all of those things or doing all of those things that you're supposed to do. Oh, by the way, one of the other things was we weren't allowed to have long that kind of fell by the wayside, you know. <laughs> and uh, my mother still asks me to this day, she says, when are you going to get a haircut? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> the bald guy? <laughs> but you know what? It's the, the, the thing about it, what God was saying, and wants us to understand that he doesn't want us worried about all those other accoutrements you know, of, of the Christian walk. He wants us to connect with him. And he wants, he wants that kind of relationship with you. He wants you to, to be able to, to hear him and to speak with him and to know that you are connecting with God. That's so important to God. And if it's important to God, it should be important to us also. Power praying is always connected with the Holy Spirit, who's God. Thirdly, power praying is always motivated, motivated by the Holy Spirit. Now, this is, a, this, is an amazing, this is an amazing truth. Romans 8, beginning with verse 25, But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Now, stop right there, because we always get confused. That was mean in the same way, the Spirit. Well, in the same way as what we just said. If we hope for what we do not have, we wait for it patiently. All right. Take that phrase, waiting for it patiently, and move on. In the same way, waiting for it patiently, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. See what that verse just said? The Spirit is waiting patiently to help you in your weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will.